I want to build a hand crank generator that can be used to produce electricity anywhere to either charge my phone, power a light, or an upcoming project that requires one. There are many hand crank generators available online and I've previously tested one for charging my phone. Though due to a large gear ratio and cheap brushed motor as a generator, it was very inefficient. It's quite common to use brushed electric motors as generators because if you spin the shaft, you can actually generate electricity at the wires. But the problem is with this is that it needs to spin at really high RPM. So the speed that you can spin a hand crank at is far too low for this kind of motor to generate say 10 volts or so. Uh, so we need a huge gear ratio to convert the hand crank speed up to the higher RPM at the motor speed. Alternatively, we can build our own alternator. I've done this in the past when I built a flywheel battery, which used an axial flux alternator to generate electricity. This worked by spinning two plates of magnets either side of some copper coils. Each magnet is mounted with alternating poles, so one has its north pole facing the camera, and the next has its south pole facing the camera. So when placing a coil next to the magnets and spinning them, the magnetic field changes, creating a current within the coil. And because of the alternating magnet poles, this magnet will produce a current in this direction, and the other magnet will produce it in the opposite direction. And the direction of the current flow will alternate as the magnets spin. So let's replicate this alternator design with some small modifications to make it suitable for a hand crank generator. I started by printing the plate that will hold the magnets, or otherwise known as the rotor, as it rotates within the alternator. This was simply printed from PLA plastic as it's cheap, non-conductive and doesn't affect the magnetic fields. Then I bought some high quality N52 grade magnets that simply press fit into the rotor, making sure the polarity of each magnet alternates around the circumference. I then printed a housing that will hold the rotor as well as a shaft that is keyed, which will be important later. Then I printed the mount for the stator or the stationary portion of the alternator which will eventually hold the coils in position. And finally, on top of that, I can mount the second rotor, which is also keyed to keep it spinning at the same rate as the first rotor on the other side. Now I need to make the coils that will be sandwiched between the two. At first, I used this 0.8 mm enameled copper wire, but it didn't allow many turns of wire resulting in a low output voltage. The number of turns of wire in the coil is very important as generally more turns of wire means a higher output voltage. So I rewound the coils with much thinner wire so that I could get more turns, which should increase the voltage. Another factor that affects the output voltage is the speed at which the magnets pass the coils. So I 3D printed a gear ratio that will allow me to spin the rotors faster, which increases the voltage significantly. The final method to increasing the output voltage is to connect the coils in series. Similar to connecting two batteries in series will double the voltage. This works the same with the coils. So I wound seven more coils, each with 350 turns of wire, making a total of eight coils and 2,800 turns of wire, which were all glued to the central stator and soldered together in a configuration of two in series and four in parallel, which as I just mentioned, the number of coils in series affects the output voltage and the number of coils in parallel affects the current capabilities. So two in series should produce about 15 to 20 volts and four in parallel should be able to handle the current produced by my manual arm strength. The coils are then soldered to a full bridge rectifier, which is just four diodes that convert the alternating current or AC into direct current or DC. This works because the diodes only let electricity flow through in one direction. So if the coil produces current in the clockwise direction, it will flow from the coil down through this diode over towards the LED, then after the LED, it will flow towards the top of the rectifier and down through this diode, which connects it back to the coil, completing the circuit. But if the coil creates current in the anti-clockwise direction, it will flow through this wire to the rectifier, down through this diode, over to the LED, back towards the top of the rectifier and down through the diode to complete the circuit. So no matter the current direction in the coil, the current direction at the LED or the output is always the same. And I also added a few small capacitors to try create a smoother output voltage. So with a small voltmeter connected to the output of the rectifier, 
We can see the generated electricity when the handle is spun. Though this is only with one rotor spinning and by attaching the second rotor, we can greatly increase the magnetic field within the coils, essentially doubling the output voltage. I then glued an XT60 connector to the frame of the generator, which will be used to output the generated power, and attach the other half of the frame to cover up the electronics. And finally, I added a handle to the crank, and there we have it, a 3D printed hand crank generator. So, how well does it work? So to test how well the generator works, I made this small cable which has an XT60 connector to plug into the generator and then just has some crocodile clips on the other end so we can uh, see if it will power any various electronic items. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any 12 volt LEDs or light bulbs, um, but this voltmeter lights up just by turning it, which is essentially an LED in itself. Uh, but what I do have is the brushed electric motor that I showed earlier in the video. So let's see if this runs. Uh, through hand power alone. So we'll just connect the crocodile clips onto there and then spin the generator. <laughs> well, that's working. The, um, it's quite impressive how much more resistance it adds to the, to the generator. I can't really hold this whilst I turn it. Yeah, it's quite a lot of resistance to turn that. And if I spin the generator even faster, see if it goes higher RPM. <laughs> that actually works really well. So it must be generating quite a lot of, lot of power. Uh, it definitely increases the resistance a lot. Uh, let's see what else we can power. I've got... Um, I've got a bank of supercapacitors, which were from my uh, supercapacitor dragster a few years ago. Uh, I haven't actually used them in a while, so I don't know whether they have any charge. Uh, so if I plug these in like that, and then it'd be nice to have a bit of a longer wire, but that's going to have to do. <laughs> Move those out of the way, and then we'll wind this up. I assume the, um, the voltage, the voltmeter on the top here doesn't show anything at the moment because I assume it needs a minimum voltage to actually show something. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'll use my multimeter. Right, there we go. I've got the voltmeter connected up to the capacitors now so you can see what they're at. So 1.3 volts at the moment. And if I turn this, It's charging up quicker than I thought it would do. Two volts. I don't know when the LED voltmeter starts turning on. Oh, the LED voltmeter is turning on now. So it's saying 2.8 volts. Slightly different to the multimeter, but it's not bad. Uh, I think these are, so these are three volt capacitors and I think it's six in series. So uh, that's 18 volts. So. I guess we can charge this up for a little bit. It's charging up surprisingly fast, actually. Let's see if I if I turn it slow, see if it still generates. Yes, yeah, so if I turn it slow, it just generates a bit slow. And if I really crank it, then we get more volts. Okay, uh, I don't really know what to do with that voltage now. I guess we could... <laughs> I guess we could power the motor. Um, all right, connecting the crocodile clip to the motor. Oh. <laughs> wow. That's quite a lot of uh, energy stored just from cranking this thing around for a for probably not even more than a minute, really. Didn't take long at all to get up to five volts. Okay, moving on from the capacitors. Uh, I have this small 
uh, well, actually it's quite large. Uh, I have this 5 volt regulator which outputs USB power. See if I can charge my phone with this thing. I think compared to charging the capacitors and the motor, charging the phone will be very easy. So uh, let's give that a go. So I haven't actually made a cable for charging my phone directly from this. So I'm just going to use a crocodile clip uh, cable, uh, which I guess I can clip onto the bottom of this board. It's not the most ideal solution because it could short out. USB plug in the other end, uh, USB-C. Then I can plug my phone in the other end. Hopefully this doesn't kill my phone. Um, how should I prop this up? Maybe I'll lean it down and use, use this big coil of wire. So I need to produce a minimum of five volts for it to charge and it's charging. It says uh, one hour, 13 minutes to charge from 45%. If I stop, yeah, it detects USB disconnected. If I turn it again, charging. There's far less resistance charging my phone uh, because I guess, I think this thing is only five volts, one amp. Uh, so, so that's only five watts total. Whereas when we're charging the supercapacitors or powering the motor, it's probably, you know, t 10 to 20 watts or so. So it, it's much more difficult to turn. But this thing, I'm not sure I could crank this for an hour and 13 minutes uh, to get my phone to full, but it, it works. It's not bad. <laughs> so if any of you want to build your own hand crank generator for charging your phone or powering anything else, uh, the 3D printer files for this are freely available uh, via the link in the description below, which will go to printables uh, and all of the information about the bearing sizes, the bolt sizes, the magnet sizes, uh, all the coil wire diameters, etc. Uh, will also be mentioned on the printables description. So uh, let me know if you build your own hand crank generator and uh, click subscribe and a thumbs up if you like the project. Goodbye.